Hello and welcome back. Um, it's been a while since I made a video uh, because medical school is crazy and so I haven't really done as much tutoring and therefore like I just didn't know like what to say. Um, but it's two and a half weeks until the um, GAMSAT begins, until the section two begins. And so I wanted to come back, make a video about what I would do if I were you. And I had two and a half weeks before I sat section two. Um, I have a previous video that kind of goes through what section two is, task A, task B, that kind of thing. And so um, I'll link that below and you can watch that if you kind of want an oversight and you're not two and a half weeks away. But if you are two and a half weeks away, I think you hopefully already know what's in section two and this is more of a just like tips and like final last minute preparation sort of thing. So without further ado, let's just jump straight in. So you have two and a half weeks and on the day you'll have five minutes to plan and 60 minutes to write two essays, a task A and a task B. What I would say is that you really need to be doing timed essays every day. And so I'd recommend like one or two timed essays every day between now and the exam. There is a list of the most common topics that I put in my last video, but I can kind of run through that again now. And what I would do is I'd literally give yourself like the two and a half minutes to plan it. I'd make yourself write it in 30 minutes, like really strict time conditions, like exam conditions, no interruptions, no nothing. And then I'd go through after you've written it and like add in stuff and make it a good essay. So like you've kind of written the structure, you've done as much as you can in 30 minutes and then just give yourself unlimited time to then go back and think, okay, I should have put this example in. I'm going to find that now. I'm going to learn that now, that sort of thing. So you get the chance to like practice writing in 32 and a half minutes, which you need to do but then you also get the opportunity to like build on it with ideas and kind of learn from that. The next thing I would say is like with this list of topics, kind of go through it and look at the different things and see what you could do and what you really would struggle with on the day. And like really prioritize picking topics that are difficult for you so that if you do get those on the day, you're like able to do something. There's no point in just picking the easiest topics because you know, if you get a bad one on the day, like you need to be able to answer that. And so I would start with your worst ones and work your way up to your best ones. The next thing that I would say is that you should get someone to read your essays for you and give you feedback. Now, this is like one of the most invaluable things ever. There's tutors is obviously the, the most useful thing you can do. And um, I'm happy to kind of read through people's essays. Um, I'm taking on new clients right now. But I also really want to stress that like you don't need a tutor to do well in the GAMSAT. I didn't have a tutor. I have multiple friends who didn't have tutors. Like you don't need a tutor. It's just helpful to have one and it's helpful to kind of get advice and someone who really knows what they're doing. But you don't need that. You could ask your family members to read through it for you, partner, friends, anyone who's kind of academically minded would be even more helpful, especially for task A. So anyone that's done like a humanities degree, so they've like written a lot of essays, would be a good choice. Or online groups, you know, there's the student room, there's Facebook groups, like there's loads of places where you can find other people who are going through the same thing as you and you can swap essays with them and kind of get feedback there. That's what I did. I got like friends of mine to read through it, I got my family to read through it and I uploaded it sometimes to those like Facebook groups and got some feedback on that. So I'd really recommend that. And then the final thing I'd say is like really use your time well between now and section two, but remember that section three and section one are coming as well. So don't just completely shut off doing any section one and section three to only focus on section two, because section three, in my opinion, even though it's a section I did the best on, is the hardest section and it's the one that you need to spend the most time studying for. So, you know, 30 minutes to do your timed essay, maybe an hour or two to kind of go through it, add in things you would have wanted to and review that, but then don't neglect section one and section three. And like keep up to date with your science. Maybe a few days before section two is okay to have a like little break just to really 
focus on section two, but like I wouldn't stop doing section one and section three now. Like you need to be keeping up with everything. And then another thing that I think is really useful is once you've written the essay and you've written it on that topic is to get cards, uh, like flashcards, and kind of really break back the essay into like literally an introduction, paragraph one, paragraph two, conclusion. And literally on that card, just the title, the kind of um, main argument that you're going to make in your introduction, the main argument you're making in paragraph one with the example, and the detailed example is really important because that's kind of a way you can get extra marks on the day. It's like having really good examples to really like support what you're saying and evidence your point. And then the same with section two and then your conclusion. Um, sorry, with paragraph two and then your conclusion. So those are some really important tips that I would give. And then what I'm going to do now in the next part of the video is like really go through what I'd recommend as an approach to task A and task B. Now you don't have to do this. There's a hundred different ways to do it. There's a hundred different ways to do well. This is just what worked for me and what has worked really well with the students that I tutor. So, you know, there is no right way to do it, but some ways do result in better marks than others. And I think this is a really good basic starting point for everyone. So the first thing that I want to talk about is task A, just because the notes in it are right in front of me. So I think that makes it a bit easier for me. But before you've even decided on what you're writing, I'd recommend only choosing one quote. Now, I know this is controversial and people like to like do multiple quotes and stuff, but I think like simplicity, easiest way to make sure you've got clear and logical argument, just choose one quote and write your essay on that one quote. I'd tie that quote into like your central argument. So in the introduction, I'd make sure you're really contextualizing that quote. And then I'd make sure that you literally say the quote and whether you're arguing against it, whether you're arguing for it, it doesn't matter. But just really having the quote there maximizes your chance of getting the content marks and make sure that you're getting the marks for like actually writing on topic. Once you've kind of done your introduction, it's really important that at the end of your introduction, you set up your essay to then um, argue what you're gonna say throughout. So it should be really clear just from reading the introduction what you're gonna say. Now I'll put some examples of this on the video, but just really making sure that you have got your introduction, you're arguing the quote, you're contextualizing the quote, and then you're setting up your argument or your thesis for the entire essay. In paragraph one, I would then really contextualize what you're saying there. So for example, I would take one topic and reuse it again and again. So whether you're interested in like the history of the Orkney Islands, the industrial revolution, um, you know, certain political theories, like a particular thing that's happened, diamond mining in Africa, like, do you know what I mean? Like a very specific topic. I'd learn a lot of information on that and I'd find ways to frame that content into different arguments that work for different quotes. Because if you kind of can use the same topic over and over again in different ways, and you really make sure that you're getting the content marks by making sure that it is specific to the quote that you're doing, because the worst thing you can do is like try and force an essay in that's not really on topic, and then you will probably fail the section because you haven't answered the question and you haven't stayed on topic of the quote. But like, find something you're interested in and then find a way to recycle it into lots of different things. So for example, with diamond mining in Africa, I had a student who really liked to write about that. There is a way to talk about how that worked for technology, like the technology behind that. There is a way to talk about politics and how this was like underpinning corruption in society and that sort of thing. There was ways to talk about, you know, poverty and how the exploitation of workers and in this kind of industry that's underpinning this specific society's financial well-being was like leading to poverty and exploitation, that sort of thing. So like find a topic that you really like that you can write a lot about and then reuse it. The best kind of topics would be like something that you've done for your dissertation, something that you've done for like a module at university or something that you have like a really special interest in. So you want to have that topic that you can like reuse and recycle and that will be really helpful. 
and then you're going to write about that. You're going to make sure you've linked it to your argument, make sure you've linked that to the quote so that it's all tied in and you get those context marks and then you'll move on to paragraph two if you have time. Now if you're like running out of time and you're not sure you're going to finish, paragraph two is the best one to cut because what you absolutely don't want to do is like do paragraph two and then have no conclusion and then run out of time on your next essay. Like unfinished essays, they don't score as well, they don't look as good, like it's just not what you really want to go for. So if you're running out of time, skip paragraph two, make sure you finish the other essay. You can always come back and add in, but what you can do is like finish an essay when you're out of time. Um, but in paragraph two, if you do have time, just again, using that topic that you really like, finding a different way to kind of argue it and writing a really strong piece. Again, using that like point, evidence, example, and then kind of analyze, making sure it's linked in. Finally, in your conclusion, this is where you really want to get those top marks by tying everything in together. So make sure you really summarize what you've said well, link it into the exact kind of argument you stated you were going to make in your introduction. If you're like last sentence of your introduction and the first sentence of your conclusion or the last sentence of your conclusion are almost identical, like I think that really ties the essay in well. And then hopefully that will get you good marks. And now um, what I want to do is talk about the task B, just because it's quite different, it's a bit more of a reflective piece. Again, in the video that I made before, there's a lot more information on this, but this is kind of just like the brief overview, if you only, you know, don't have very much time because the exam is really soon, just so you can kind of remember what was said, but don't have to watch the whole video. And so what you want to do there is have a really reflective piece. So what they're looking for is like a doctor, someone who can empathize, who can reflect, who can see things from other people's point of view. And so in your introduction, again, I would just stick with one quote for this. And you really want to make sure that it's contextualized, get it on theme, explain what the quote means in your own words and kind of outline what you're going to say, kind of setting the scene. Then in your first paragraph, you kind of want to reflect about what happened, making sure again that it's like aligned with the quote, that your kind of argument is flowing through. But unlike in task A, where you're actually stating your argument, here you don't really want to state arguments because it's meant to be more reflective. It's not meant to be like a, in this essay, I'm going to argue kind of thing. Then it's also really helpful to add the perspective of others, just because that shows that you're aware of what other people are doing. You're kind of aware of other people's views, and that's obviously a very important quality for a future doctor to have. And then in the last paragraph, I'd really make sure that your argument that you're making and what you're saying links into like wider society. So you can talk about like the lessons that you've learned from that, again, linking it to the quote and to the overall theme and talk about how that's kind of relevant for everyone and like a bigger issue, just because that again shows that you have like wider knowledge of the world, you kind of know what's going on and it just makes for a stronger piece. And then again with the conclusion, if you can link it so it's really, really well aligned with your introduction and with your essay, that just ties everything together well and gets you more marks. And you also want to make sure that you've kind of summarized everything you've said and really kept it on theme. And I think the final thing I want to say about all of this is just really do be vigilant with your time. I think you really do need to move on to the next essay as soon as 30 minutes are finished, because the last thing you want to do is spend like 45 minutes on one essay and then only have 15 minutes to try and rush the other one because they are like worth equal marks. So it's just not worth taking that time now and then losing it later. So I'd really make sure that you are really strict, plan those essays, make sure you know what you're gonna write, you've got that structure and then go for it. And yeah, I will now upload the list of common topics that come up in task A and task B, and you can kind of give those a go, but good luck, it will be absolutely fine and you've got this.